Hi, everybody. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and to pay my respects to their elders past and present. Sorry, I obviously um, didn't do what Meryl told us to do um, in the previous session. I did practice a bit, but um, I'll start again. The Australian government relies on well-managed information to better support, protect and serve the Australian community. The presentation today will explore the importance of well-managed information in order to demonstrate the integrity of the workings of government. I will outline briefly the role of the National Archives before considering findings of selected royal commissions and other investigations where the importance of good information management was identified and recommendations for improvements were made. I will then touch on how National Archives works with Australian government agencies to build trust and integrity in the context of government decision making. And I'd like to mention that when I talk about Australian government and Australian government agencies, I mean federal government. This is not to imply that other governments are less Australian. It's just the term that took up a few years ago and we stick to it. I will also in my presentation turn to the current state of the whole of government information management, discuss what is done well and where risks and challenges still present themselves. The topic of integrity and trust is timely considering the findings of recent Royal Commissions and in particular the Robert Death Royal Commission. Many of these findings, especially those considering notable failures and recommendations for improvements in government's record keeping, emphasize the importance of good information management as foundational to accountable and trusted government. I'll be presenting an overview of some of these influences in the environment and some of the activities the National Archives is giving priority to in response. Very briefly about us. Under the Archives Act 1983, the National Archives of Australia determines information management standard for federal government agencies. It also provides guidance so that Australian government creates and keeps records of its decisions and actions to demonstrate accountability to the community and evidence the in of the and the integrity of the operations of the Australian public service. Again, that's federal public service. The Archives also authorizes destruction of information assets with no ongoing value to government or community, and most importantly for my team, selects and preserves the most significant records of federal government and makes them, makes them available to government and community as a national resource to enrich and inform how we live today. As we all know, in the past several years, Australians witnessed revelations uncovered by royal commissions on various pain points in our society. Royal commissions are a key integrity mechanism by which governments can review their actions in order to be accountable to the Australian community and to learn and improve from past mistakes. Record keeping is often a failure noted by Royal Commission's reports. Each of them has something to say about records and record keeping. Here is a typical statement. It came from the final report of the Royal Commission into institutional responses to child sexual abuse which dedicated an entire volume of its final report to problems of record keeping and information sharing. The report said, inadequate records and record keeping have contributed to delays in or failures to identify and respond to risks and incidents of child sexual abuse and have exacerbated distressing trauma for many survivors. Obstructive and unrespons unresponsive processes for accessing records have created further difficulties for survivors seeking information about their lives while in the care of institutions. Problems with records and record keeping practices are not confined to the past. During our inquiry, we heard about poor records and record keeping practices by contemporary institutions, such as non-government schools and agencies providing out of home care, as well as by historical institutions. And yet, Everyone understands the importance of records, not least the individuals who had suffered from the system. The report quotes one of the survivors saying, I just wanted to know someone had done something that it had been recorded. 
that all commissions into the Rabodet scheme, looked into the establishment and design of a scheme to recover supposed overpayments from welfare recipients using income averaging to assess income and entitlement to benefit. Due to a number of shortcomings, the scheme failed resulting in suffering by those who were wrongfully identified as having been overpaid by the Australian government. The Royal Commission noted a number of examples where important decisions and conversations were not documented by senior public servants, government lawyers and government ministers. You can see a quote from René Leon, the former Secretary of the Department of Human Services. I have been aware on many occasions of ministerial expectations that sensitive or difficult matters not be clearly expressed in written briefs. As a matter of good practice, it would be desirable if ministers did not impose that expectation on public servants and clearly expressed an expectation that important advice, whether convenient or inconvenient, be conveyed in writing and maintained as a Commonwealth record. The Royal Commission's report in Chapter 23 Improving the Australian Public Service, noted many of the failures of public administration, including woefully inadequate record-keeping practices. This is summarised in Section 7, record-keeping failures. A major theme that, that is coming through in, is that records of important and high-level decisions were not documented. As an illustration of this point, the report presents some examples of significant events where public servants or in-house lawyers failed to comp contemporaneously document and retain file notes of important decisions and conversations. These are in relation to staff at the senior executive service level. They didn't create notes of meetings, and these were people including secretaries, chief legal counsels, and so on. Records of some significant decisions were not created in relation to dealing with contractors, such as PricewaterhouseCooper and Clayton Wood Services. The report goes on saying that while there is no specific policy requiring important decisions and conversations to be documented by public servants, the APS values include that the APS is open and accountable to the Australian community. Under the law and within this framework of ministerial under the law and within the framework of ministerial responsibility. Our values include that public service should be open to scrutiny and transparent in decision making. We should be able to demonstrate that actions and decisions have been made with appropriate consideration. We also should be able to explain actions and decisions to the people affected by them. Going back a little bit, 2015, and that's what the Royal Commissions into Robert referred to as well. In 2015, there was published a report led by Peter Shogold, the former Secretary of Prime Minister and Cabinet. The report looked into the failures of large government policy initiatives, including the Home Insulation Program, where funding was provided for the installation of ceiling insulation. The implementation of the program compromised the safety of installers and ultimately was a fact in the deaths of four men. In his 10 key lessons, Shergold highlighted the importance of the creation and capture of adequate records. He said, Nothing symbolizes significance more than handling a minister a sheet of signed advice. Increasingly, though, policies developed in real time by email and text message communication between departments and ministers' offices. These important electronic documents need to be managed as confidential records. They are the files of the future. They are our protection against digital amnesia. And of course, many of us can relate now when we talk about ministers and senior public servants using apps, communication apps such as WhatsApp and similar, and similar third-party tools. Peter Shogold also noted in his report that public servants failed to keep detailed records of key decisions and how they were arrived at, or put into writing concerns regarding designs of the programs which they later stated were raised orally with the minister. Essentially, what these reports highlight is the importance of well-managed records to demonstrate the integrity of the operations of government and to foster trust by the community. Well-managed records not only support effective and responsive running of government policy and programs, but also enable later scrutiny of actions and decisions made. Of interest, both reports have found failures in the creation and capture of needed information. 
This reminds us that information, as information managers, while it is important to manage records once they have been created, it is also important to ensure that necessary records are created in the first place. Integrity is an interesting concept in relation to information management. Well-managed records and data do support integrity by accurately evidencing what was said and done. That does not always mean that what was said was accurate or what was done was it should be. We can see this in the 1997 report into the separation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children that found there were inaccuracies in the public record. One can feel the poignancy of a survivor's statement and the bad things they said about me in the past from the settlement wasn't true. There are a lot of untrue things said about me on the files. I have cried about the lies on those files. However, these inaccuracies, when contested, can enable us to understand the true quality of administration at the time. Essential and accurate record of the inaccuracies should be kept as witness of past practices and when necessary used to restore the truth. What can National Archives do to help government to improve its trustworthiness and integrity? As I mentioned before, we provide guidance and support to Australian government agencies to assist them to improve their information management. Partly in, respons in response to the 2015 Shergold report, where he noted the need for further guidance on how and when records must be created within the Australian Public Service, the National Archives issued an information management standard in 2017. It was, it was also influenced by the 2012 Australian National Audit Office report into records management in the Australian Public Service that made comment on the lack of a single clear and specific requirement for the Australian government to create records of all its key business activities and decisions. Our standard is principle-based, and principle two in particular is clear that it is expected that records of communications, actions, deliberations, and decisions are created. The Rabo Debt Royal Commission has made a recommendation that the Australian Public Service Commission develop standards and deliver training on standards for documenting important decisions and discussions. Clearly, despite of all the data that we have, there's still room for improvement in terms of creating the records that are really needed by our society. And the National Archives of Australia will look to assist. You can see all the rest of the principles from our standard on one side um, of the slide, but I will talk about our most recent significant initiative. And this was done to address trust in government in our current whole of government policy, building trust in the public record, managing information and data for government and community. This came into effect in 2021, was issued under the Archives Act by the Director General of the National Archives and endorsed by the Attorney General and Minister for Industrial Relations, our portfolio minister at the time. The purpose of the policy was to continue to improve Australian government information management. It aims to ensure that agencies understand that well-managed information sorry, is accessible and usable for current and future users and to assist them with achieving their operational and strategic outcomes. The policy builds on the work the National Archives done with their two previous policies, Digital Transition Policy in 2011 and Digital Continuity 2020 Policy, which was launched in 2015. These policies sought to support the Australian government to move to digital information management and to realize the benefits of improved processes. The ultimate goal of building trust in the public record policy is to help ensure that Australian government can serve the community better, which is the purpose of both government and those of us who work for government. The policy talks a lot about information assets. And this is where we take an integrated approach and use the term information asset to mean record, to mean information and data collectively and interchangeable, depending on the context or the audience that we're talking to. Data is a form that has been specifically identified given that so many decisions today are based on data collection and analysis. We need to ensure evidence of successive government's decisions and how they came to those decisions is kept and managed and this includes the supporting data. 
In the final analysis, whether you call something information or data, if it has recorded results of government activity, decisions or deliberations, no matter what format, it is a Commonwealth record under the Archives Act. But more importantly, it is a public record that needs to be managed with integrity and made, and made available for scrutiny. The policy outlines three key requirements, and you can see them on the screen. We call for robust information governance. We also call for fit-for-purpose processes, practices, and systems to facilitate creation of records. The policy also anticipates that agencies reduce inefficiency and risk through continuing progress in their information management processes. There are 17 actions there and three mandatory. Responsibility for implementing the policy rests with Australian government agencies. Usually information management professionals like we here at the conference today will take the lead, but engagement across many levels within an agency is required for success in policy implementation. The National Archives role in delivering the policy includes monitoring and reporting on the progress of the whole of government, and also to offer advice, guidance, and support to agency staff. Our latest work in creating advice to agencies is focusing on integrity of government. The senior executive service in the Australian government needs to take responsibility for information management. These high-ranking officers in public service need to lead with integrity to protect data, information and records in their agencies. To support them, we created new advice, which was published on our website. We identified six actions that apply to senior officers but can also be used by information management professionals to pinpoint and persuade these executives who are very busy and must manage competing priorities for the organization. The six, the six actions can be used as a kind of checklist. What do I need to know? Am I following the six actions already? Where do I go for help in my agencies? These can be, as I said, can be found on our website. We're currently working on advice to every member of the Australian Public Service with similar message. How do we know what happens in government? And some of you will know who work in government that we do this through our annual information management maturity checkup survey. Agencies can use this data they create during the survey to set priorities and, and identify pathways to improve the information management performance. They can also use this data to build business cases for resources. And the National Archives uses this for planning our advice and guidance thinking of our future service delivery, gather information on challenges within the government. Interestingly, as you can see, in 2022, agencies responded in assessment that the index for creating of records is their best success. They have less problems in it. Well, clearly, in some spaces, that's not enough and more work needs to be done. I would now like to return to the theme of the RIMPA conference. I've already commented on the terms like information assets, records, data, information, and use them here interchangeably. For this presentation, the gap that I have been discussing is how lack of effective information management can lead to a gap in integrity and trust in the operations of the Australian government, or any government, or any organization. Also, how the National Archives of Australia works with federal government agencies to bridge any record-keeping gaps, including those picked up by the Royal Commissions. I believe all of us at this conference, irrespective of which organization we work for, have a common purpose to bridge those gaps to better serve our stakeholders and earn and keep their trust. I invite you to visit the National Archives of Australia's website. Our resources are there for everyone to share noting that they're written specifically for government, federal government jurisdictions. So some requirements are particularly to us. Thank you for your time today, and I welcome any questions if we have time or during the conference. Please come and talk to me.